Greetings and salutations, I'm Kev. Welcome to this new let's play of Emperor Rise of the Middle Kingdom, which is the last in the series of Impressions City Builders, uh, published under Sierra in the early 2000s. Uh, yeah, and arguably the most refined of the whole series. Of course, set to China, and it's a very enjoyable game. It certainly has a lot of the improvements you really need, with their customizable roadblocks and uh, all that stuff, all, all that stuff. So managing the city is quite easy. Um, yeah, I believe th this version I'm playing right here, that's the one available at Good Old Games. It became available just a few months ago, as far as I know. I don't think, I think it was released in February. So yeah, it's quite new there. And it's not available on Steam, which is kind of surprising. I mean, Activision made a whole... one gigantic Sierra bundle. But they did not include Emperor, for whatever reason. They included the other city builders, but not this one. But it is available over on uh, Good Old Games, so by all means, go there. And, well, I, I assume it's going to run quite well on Win Windows 10, which is where, what my platform is. Okay. Um, yeah, on, onwards to the game. Need to build a city. Uh, we are going to create a new emperor. And uh, let's just call ourselves Keb. I think that's going to be the uh, dynasty name. Uh, oh yeah, and this other thing, uh, Zodiac Animals. Hmm, yeah. So basically that's the Chinese Zodiac. Um, and all the animals there. If I could have picked a cat, I would have done so. Sadly, if I, if, as far as I know the story of uh, the creation of the Chinese Zodiac, the cat was tricked by the rat. And so didn't get a spot. Oh, at least that's how it goes in Fruits Basket, the anime and manga. <laughs> that's, all the, that's all the insight I have, I suppose, into the Zodiac. You know what? I think, actually, instead of just calling myself Keb, uh, most of these things are just far most of these animals are just, well, your basic farm animals plus the tiger uh, and the monkey. Uh, but I think we're gonna go with the dragon. And if we're gonna be a dragon, Ooh, I know, I'm, I'm kind of torn here. So yeah, there are two, two names that come to mind here. There is, of course, that one. Uh, but I think I'm going to go with that one. We're going to be Smog, Smog, Smog the Dragon. Yes, 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 that sounds good. Now, the Zodiac animal of your choice is kind of important because that means you're going to get bonus whenever the 12 year cycle ends up at your animal. And I think the bonuses differ based on the animal you choose. So... It does have a bit of an impact. I, at least I think that's how it goes. It's been so long since I've played that I can't really remember. Mm. But obviously, that's not my actual Zodiac animal, by the way. I, I think I know which one I have in the Chinese Zodiac, and that's not Dragon. Um, but I'm not gonna go with my, joy, my own one. So, Smog, Dragon... Onwards. Uh, historical game. Just because it's been so long since I've played, I think we're going to start with the tutorials, nevertheless. Welcome to ancient China, home to the world's oldest continuous civilization. You are about to travel back in time over 4,000 years, for it was then along the fertile banks of the Wei River that several families banded together, discarded their nomads' cloaks, and established a small settlement. As village elder, it is your duty to plan the layout of this new settlement. You will be called upon to provide your people with food and water, as well as a means to slake their spiritual thirst. Okay, uh, that's easy enough. And of course we get the basic introduction to all these basic services in one long go here, uh, which is quite okay. We're just going to make a very simple city here. This is a tutorial, but it's all... So we're not going to stay here for long. Okay, so four cities, do now just wait for our poor folk to migrate in. That's going to be fine. And there's one other thing that was unique to this city builder compared to the rest of the series, and that's Feng Shui. Which is rather interesting. Basically, your cities, either you have an aesthetics value for your whole town that is based on your dedication to uh, Feng Shui. 
And as you can see, when the building here, that's a watchtower, and when it goes yellow like that, it is in an area where it doesn't provide good feng shui. It's, but if you plant it near stones, as we have here, we got we, we, it turns green and that's good feng shui, feng shui. So we always want to build buildings that have those requirements near those specific areas. I think it's the same thing for hillsides, yeah, so... Not rivers. So it basically wants stones and hills, for the most part. Uh, it doesn't react to this one for whatever reason, not there. Not there, I think it's because it gets negative value based on the trees. I mean, it reacts fine there, but not here. Huh. Never mind. Um, we have some people in town, they are gonna need water, so we plant down a well. Oh, the roadblock. I so missed the roadblock <laughs> in our, in our uh, Caesar 3 game. Best thing ever. Okay, so we're gonna get that there, that's fine. Uh, we needed a market square, which is rather com more complex than it was in Caesar 3. But it is the same system that is used at least in Zeus. Yeah, I think in Pharaoh you just had the standard four square market, I think, but in Zeus you had this customizable, more or less, marketplace. Mm, let's see all the things. We do need a granary. We do need some... Yeah, yeah, employees needed. Do need some hunter's tents. They're all nice and green. Unfortunately, we are gonna need a watchtower out there too, so that they, these things don't burn to the ground as far as I know. Actually, I'm not sure. I assume that they don't... I assume that they, they will collapse or catch fire. Uh, as for Feng Shui, as you can see, the townsfolk do not like to live near stone. So they want grasslands. They do not want to live here. And that's fine, we have plenty of room. Okay, it's my stone. Just hit that. It's gonna be pretty quick this one because uh, as soon as they get access to food and everything, food and water and a shrine, this should conclude the mission. Right, it was only 150 people. I feel uneasy about moving to a new city. You worry too much. I think we'll prosper here. Yes, you will. And in words they come. Now, arguably, this is probably the easiest of the city builders in the uh, of the original four city builders, and. Uh, it's basically because they've streamlined how everything works. And it's by, it's also the prettiest, I think. And I rather like the music too. And though there are quite a few city builders that focus on Rome, there aren't that many that focus on China. And I'm still waiting for a city builder that uh, focuses on, e on um, India. I don't think I've seen an in city builder focused on India, actually. Can't think of one out of out of uh, out of pure memory here. Here they go, slowly going to hunt the pheasants. Bring home the not bacon. Bring home the birds. Uh, let's see. There should be more flocks of pheasants here. Thought there were at least. I thought I saw someone moving in. There we go. Oh, they actually march on a much wider area than other hunting packs I've seen before. Okay, that's cool. That's fine. Come on, get the meat back, process it, deliver it. I assume at least you have to process it. There are too many animals for them to kill and not much. Okay. 
Oh, right, because they, uh, they don't, you haven't got enough people, of course. Uh, we'll just block down all the houses that we can. Not build up there. Build one on the corner there. Get some good Feng Shui. We're not really gonna care about Feng Shui in this game. We're gonna, it's gonna be fairly short. Okay, we have some meat there. We should build the uh, shop. Just a little food shop. And then we have all these other things. Oh, I so like the fact that you can actually control goods and traffics and all that fun stuff. Ah, another thing I've missed <laughs> in Caesar 3. Oh well. But again, they're, 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 these games are separated by four years, I think. Yeah, I think this was most from 2000, 2002 and Caesar was 98. I'll obviously verify that before I put this video up, since I tend to always put the year in the heading. So yeah, 2002, I'm fairly certain. So, 15 year, 15 year old game. But still a darn good one. some food. So again, it's pretty pretty much the same as all the Caesar games, uh, Caesar games, the old impressions city builders. Set up a basic little town square, basic food production, give them water access, bit of religion, and everybody becomes very very happy. And there's this car peddler, and that's the plain cottage, and that's gonna pop up the mission eventually. Right, yeah, 150 people. If you have 14 in each, yeah, we're gonna get there. As soon as they're all fed. And uh, though these didn't upgrade. Oh, neighborhood appeal. Really? Okay, can I fix that? Huh. Well, that's gonna be a challenge. I have nothing to deal with the appeal of the area. Nothing that I can actually click to do improve the appeal. Huh. Um, where do I even see it? Interesting. Yeah, it's probably because I put these buildings down. I assume that's what kills the appeal, and unfortunately, I can't do anything to improve the appeal. Huh. That's a bit of a iffy this situation. But the the homes that are far enough away should make this work. Mm, let's see, city summary. Fourteen percent are unemployed, so it's time to build a few more hunter tents. I'm gonna build them on the far side here. Except there aren't any ah it there. Give them a bit more road to walk, please. Employees needed. That's fine. Just feed them all and this is gonna conclude that mission, I think. And then it'll be onwards to the next tutorial. Don't know how many of them there are, but shouldn't be too many. Just I just need to go through them so I I'm sure that I remember the game correctly. And one of the cool things, if I remember correctly, is how they work the foodstuffs. Basically, you start off with bland food, which is just basically you have access to one type of food. Then it goes all the way up to through bland to... Uh, Let's see, bland, to plain, to appetizing, to tasty, to delicious. And your run-of-the-mill people will only need to get up to appetizing, which is why it defaults to that. And the higher order of the city, they will need more access to even more varied food. Um, I don't recall if you can specify the exact food type you can buy. I don't think you can specify that. 
I don't think you can. So I can't tell her to like simply buy only meat. Or can I? Well, I don't know. I only have access to one food type, so I can't really see. That's okay. And there we go. Well done. You have successfully built a small village and fed them well on meat provided by the hunters. It is easy to see that you learn quickly. Press the proceed button to continue on to the next mission where your people will learn how to coax seedlings from the fertile land. Okie dokie, onwards. Welcome back to the village of Banpol. Several generations have passed and the village that your people founded along the banks of the Wei River has prospered. There is a renewed sense of excitement in the town today. Word has just arrived of a nutritious new food source, millet. As a highly respected village elder, you are needed to plan the establishment of farms where millet can be grown to supplement the diet. Hemp farms can also be built. The fibers from the hemp plant have many uses, not the least of which is for durable garments. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, today the hemp plant is probably com probably associated with a few other things other than cloth um, to the city. Let's see now. I'll come back indeed. And yeah, now we're gonna grow. Um, we're you talking about the building a road. Oh yeah, okay, elevation and the farm and how that works. Yeah, uh, and distribution of hemp. Which is fine, and all the whole, how the whole food thing works. Okay, I think we're just gonna pretend we know all about that. Oh, oh, dang it! We start with the same darn city. Ah, oh, boo. Okay, uh, that's different. I thought we would advance to a new town. Oops. Dinner eight. We are gonna grow food, right? Two hundred fifty. Yeah, that's. Fine. So now we need farms. Actual farms. Uh, do we have the access to the irrigation yet? No, that's fine then. And this is the only area where we can actually farm, isn't it? That's fine. Uh, da -da -da -da. How far away from the farm can we build fields again? I think it's only three squares. Something like that. Let's try this. Let's see. First, we need to plant the, the uh, farm itself. Then the type of uh, um, crop. Of course, now we only have millet. And this is where this game is so superior to the others in the series. Whereas in um, let's see now, in season three, you only have the, the three by three square farms, uh, which make a return in. Uh, Zeus, if I remember correctly, and in um, in uh, Pharaoh you have the 3x3 farms and the flood plains. But the Chinese ones, they work very differently. You can customize the exact composition of the field, and if you have multiple crops, you can basically split the uh, area that a farm can deal with into different crops. And that's actually what you want to do, because each crop has one month where it starts to grow, as you can see, millet starts. They start growing in July and then harvested something in October, November or something. Whereas other crops will start in, uh, much earlier or later and so on. And so if you distribute the, um, the types of field, your farms will be far more efficient. Because one farm can't deal with all of that in one season. That just won't work. And we need to get the hemp going too. I don't recall if the hemp farm can go as far as three squares. Let's see. Oh, okay. It's three squares away from that, too. Okay, nice little hemp farm there. And uh, we are going to need a storage unit. A warehouse. Again, this is a tutorial, so I'm just going to beeline through stuff. This is a bit far away for a tutorial. Uh, oh right, it's already set to a bit too far away for a normal city, I mean. Uh, but anyway, um, let's delete the roadblock, move it down. Farms and uh, hemp farms do not require 
maintenance visits. I did like this. The warehouse basically defaulted to not accept food. Given how many times I had to fix that in Caesar, I'm kind of, kind of happy about it. On the other hand, this is a new good, so it, it also set that, that to not accept. No, it actually it's set this to get from the start. Okay. Let's put it to accept. I think these dwellings deliver. Don't they? Honestly, not sure. Alright. Hemp season has begun. Uh, did it other things. We did get eight that a lot of words. A aesthetics. Aesthetics. Let's do that. Let's just prettify the neighborhood. You love living here. I know you do. I'm not allowed to not love it. There we go. Is there anything else that we have to add at this point? I don't think so. Well, that probably means there's one more level to this particular city. Something else we need to give them. Well, no matter. All we're supposed to learn at this in this stage is how to grow food. We're still waiting for the season to even start. And we are in the other pig. Let's see, I don't recall the I don't remember the sequence, but I do believe we get a pop-up once our own Zodiac here shows up. The Year of the Dragon. we get that eventually. Oh yeah, this too. The, this year's Zodiac element. You also rotate based on the, on the elements. Right, 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 right. How did that work again? There was a specific, specific bonus. If you have your Zodiac sign. That's how it worked, I think. Your Zodiac year plus the associated element. So, and that's a 60 year cycle, I think. Because you have uh, all the four elements you're familiar with in Europe, I think. Earth, air, water, fire, and metal, I think is the last one. Basically, you have five elements. So that's going to lead to a 5 times 12 cy complete cycle of 60 years, I think. I'm going by very shoddy memory here, so who knows? I could be very wrong. Okay, the farm is working at full speed. Do we have unemployment? Uh, odd enough, no. Okay, in that case we'll just let things roll along. So basically all we need to wait for now is to harvest the both of these resources. Then we're gonna have hemp, we're gonna have millet, and hopefully we'll have enough to upgrade sufficient amount of these dwellings to finish the mission. And our hunters are continuously having to walk further to find pheasant. A hunting game will only ever give you so much, given that there's a limited amount of livestock around on the, cattle, on the uh, map. Let's see, what can you hunt again? That's pheasants. I don't recall, actually. Is there something other than pheasant you hunt? I mean, there are a lot of animals. Yeah, right, eventually you'll get a palace and you'll be begin collecting animals. Um, pandas and tigers and whatnot. And bears. You don't, hunt, you don't hunt those for food. Uh, I think it was venison, right? Yeah. Pheasant, venison. What's there one more? Possibly, but I don't remember it out of hand. So let's see, these will be harvested in September. It's next month, we're not gonna get much then. I, I'm not sure why they were this inefficient. Could simply be because um, we don't have access to irrigation yet. And irrigation dramatically increases the food yield or production yield of any farm. I could also have had a problem with um, labor at the initial start here. Okay, the harvester has begun. Yeah, we're not going to generate too much hemp this 
season, I think. But they are gonna gen generate some. As far as I know how this works, um, once they start harvesting, they will immediately roll out with one cargo, and then they'll wait until they have at least four. And I don't recall if they'll move more than... Uh, well, they'll probably move this as well. I don't think they'll wait until the next year. But yeah, I think they have... I think... Uh, yeah, right, that's how... It, I, th I think this is how it works. They do have one cart worker. Each farm has one cart worker, and he'll start walking immediately. And beyond that, if you generate at least four units, they'll generate a second cart. I think. I could be wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Well, they haven't generated a new cart yet. Maybe they will see returns, I don't know. Or maybe I'm completely wrong after all. But there he goes. Okay, so there's one cart worker that will walk with one load. But during harvest, I'll walk with the four loads and stuffs. And we'll see what happens down here. Have you already delivered the cargo? No. We're still walking around harvesting. We haven't dumped up anything. There we go. A whole bit of load has been dumped now. First cart is away. With just a hundred. So now they'll stockpile another four hundred for the next cart. Yeah, this cart has 400. And now they'll wait for another 400. I think. Yep, another 400. And here's the other thing, they might not have time to harvest everything. There we go. We lost a bit of uh, harvest because of that. Another 400 load there. And that leaves them with... Three loads, basically 300 millet. Okay. So, so they, I think they will generate extra carts if they have excess cargo. Something like that. Okay, now they have access to food. We should probably immediately also make sure that they have access to... Hemp. A little hemp shop there. Hemp corner shop. Soon. Oh right, I should also set this, the food appeal here. Uh, no goods. Yeah, you're gonna get that. And for food, you're not gonna go for plain food. Instead of just bland foods, now she will try to buy millet. So that I have to offer you more than just like meat shreds. Today's menu. That changes based on uh, the uh, amount of food types you have and the types of food. So you can get a lot of Funny combination there on today's menu. Can't say I know Chinese cuisine all that well, but I find it amusing how that varies over time. Uh, except she didn't want to buy. Come on. You want to buy. I know you do. Why is this distributing instead of... There we go. Current minimum quality is plain. Does it take you this long to react then? Yes, it does. That or she'll just wait until the food has been eaten, which is also a possibility. Yeah, that might be it. Oh, there she is. Okay. I didn't notice her walk Hemp walking out. Is durable no, that's it. Yeah. Oh. What else could one want? Okay. That was a hemp walker. Never mind then. Oh, okay. maybe she doesn't buy anything because there hasn't been any demand for better food yet okay, now she want they want plain food and the other one wanted a prettier surrounding so we'll just toss in some gardens there yeah maybe she can't maybe the food, food walker can't actually buy food until this has been uh, taken care of or eaten rather <laughs> Well then, it might actually take a while then before she goes out and buys plain food and we only have so much 
him. Put on another him. Regardless, I don't think we're gonna succeed in finishing this mission this start. So we're gonna take a short break. Um, as always, um, if you enjoy watching this series or if you'd like to support my channel, uh, please consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons because that helps me out a great deal. Uh, and of course, if you'd like to really give me some feedback or just of or, or any sort, the comment field should be just down below. And beyond that, thank you for watching. <laughs>